don't worry, the girls are coming up in a bit. If you get tired of it, watch the crash at 2120, something like that. The next couple of minutes is a preview. It's my first flight on with the bicycle, and I'm fixing to be on that bicycle, as you'll see in a minute. Next couple of minutes of previews of upcoming videos. We're going down to historic Fort St. Philip on the east bank of the Mississippi River, then down to Pilot Town, Venice, and Fort Belize, one of the first forts in the United States. It'll be by Drifter Ultralight, and it'll be a lot of fun. I had just left Lot Lafitte, Louisiana, and I was en route to Port Sulphur, where I was going to land and fuel up. But on the way, I came upon this interesting site. Now, keep in mind, this is in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing out here. I was taking a chance even taking this route, this shortcut. But I came upon this strange site. All right, you've got a fairly large sized boat. Uh, you can see he's start, just started his propeller. You might can see some packages in the boat. They've rendezvoused out here in the middle of nowhere back before the times of the GPS. They could have used Loran, I'm not sure. But I made a turn, I came back around. I don't know if you can see him or not, but a guy on the back waves at me like everything is all cool. So I continued on my way about my business and Maybe it was just shrimp, maybe square grouper, who knows, but it was out in the middle of nowhere, I know that. But uh, Lafitte to Port Sulphur is 30 miles of nothing. Here's to the Austrian engineers that designed that two-cycle engine that's pushing me right now. Got 600 hours on it, still going like a... No oil leaks, nothing. Knock on wood. So I continued on down to the river, where I find an old fort, an old abandoned fort that took part in the War of 1812 and the Civil War. Very interesting place that got blown away by Hurricane Katrina. Fort St. Philip, it's on the east bank of the Mississippi River across from Fort Jackson and about 45 miles south of New Orleans. We're looking at the entryway now from the inside there and we're fixing to fly over a rotating gun mount. These guns were huge. They were the same guns that they had at Corregidor during World War II. I forgot the caliber, but uh, next coming up is another gun mount called a Endicott board battery. Smaller guns and they were restricted in movement. That's the Endicott's right there. It's a real interesting fort. It got blown away in Hurricane Katrina, though. Except for some concrete structures, it no longer exists. I'll take you through it in my next series of videos and explain a lot more about the history. St. Philip is totally isolated on the east side of the river. There's no road access. I had to go back to the airplane to get my pack with my water and a little food. We're fixing to go inside of this stone concrete blockhouse here, probably built during the Civil War by the looks of it. I probably have the last videos taken before it was destroyed by Katrina. It can be a spooky place. This is my Max Air 65 horse on floats. And actually we're headed down there right now, but this didn't turn out too well. Uh, yeah, you can say that again. I'm reaching up to adjust my camera. I got cameras all over this thing. This is an early morning takeoff. I got something coming up you might be interested in. I'm gonna put the gear down here. And to do that, I have a lever in my right hand. I squeeze it and that releases the lock. And with my other arm, I lower the gear. With my left arm, I pull up on the cable that's attached to the gears in order to take the pressure off the pin that holds it up. I then squeeze that lever that extracts the pin and use the cable to lower the gear. And that took me about 10 edits to figure that out. If you didn't follow that, I didn't either. I was too busy making the edits. Yeah, that's a lie. Make it 20 or 30 edits. But uh, we're going down to the Mississippi River. At least I thought we were. You'll see here in a minute, we ain't going nowhere. But uh, things happen with two cycle motors like any other motor. Belize is right there. The arrow's coming down to it. It's way down there, man. And I can tell you, there ain't nothing down there. 
So it's an interesting trip and you're fixing to see what happens here. There we go, my landing area picked out for me by nature. They got a very tough bottom on them, these full lotus float. It slid off to the left even though I had full right rudder, but it was okay. This is a private road and uh, the guy was real nice. I didn't have, I went to his house and uh, used the phone. This was before the day of cell phone. That's me, I'm uh, 50 years old in 1999. Where do the years go, huh? Don't worry, you'll be there one day and you'll look back and say, God, that guy was right. But who is this guy? Anybody recognize him? I, that was about a year before he was killed in California. I've been photographing all my life. You see old Dave waving? There I go. I'm over the top of him. Uh, we were just doing some practice landings on the Amit River near Reserve, Louisiana, which is near New Orleans. If you ever want to get your throat cut, hey, New Orleans is the place to do it. I can guarantee you. That's a 65 horse Max Air. I loved it, but man, when you get older, you just don't like messing with antifreeze and hoses and everything else. I like 503s now. Getting up to about 70 miles an hour. The point of this pointless maneuvering was to get the bridge to spin like a propeller. The early Max Airs were not spinnable. You'd be, if, if you tried hard, you might get one turn out of them. Here's an idea of how it might have looked had I been able to spin it. I was wearing a throat mic here that worked really well with that portable Panasonic tape deck. That little bit took me about two weeks. You never know what goes into editing until you try it. But uh, this girl, Helena, she had a flawless complexion. Look at that. That is unbelievable. That's her and I after a shoot outside my house. This girl, I had good lighting on her. It's really pretty hair, really pretty golden hair. 
She's a little country girl, a little uh, local girl, but really nice. This is Helena again. You can see that bat I had upside her head. Well, I used a computer and got rid of it. Um, she's got a bewitching look to her, really pretty. They're all pretty, what the heck am I saying? Next up is Carly. She was a untrained model, but to take photos of her, you would think she'd been modeling all her life. She could go from one pose to the next quicker than you could pull the trigger. That's one of my favorite pictures there and the one I just passed up at the beginning. And uh, that's a nice shot. A, a couple of these I had a little bit too much light on her because of where she was standing. So I'll blame it on her. See, this one here, you can see I got too much light in her face. I think that was when I first got my light box and I wasn't uh, sure about how intense the light was. I take a lot of them out to the beach too, and you'd be surprised. A lot of them like to go to the beach, especially Heather. Uh, took her out there twice one week. We shot until dark, and she called me back later that week, said, Bill, I had fun, let's go again. Heather was good at climbing trees. I always um, fly over the beach uh, the previous day to uh, make sure it's okay for the girls to come out here, you know. No people have dug fire trenches or anything like that across the runway. You may recognize this shot from one of my earlier videos, but I had to use it because it's the only shot I got of me actually landing out there with a model. Uh, my friend Mike took it. He complimented me on the landing, which I also thought was pretty good. Uh, I was always extra careful whenever I brought anybody out there. This is my friend Mike coming in. I just included it because I thought it was a cool shot. Looked pretty neat landing out there on the beach. It's uh, late summer in North Florida. This is Heather from Alabama. She graduated Florida State and went on to school in Cambridge, England. Very intelligent girl. Very nice, very pretty, very, very everything. That, there she is. There she is, a little cowboy hat I had for her. I love hearing them talk. They're funny. They tell me about their love life. <laughs> I've had them cry on my shoulder before, and I've told them, wait till you get us married. You can't wait for them to leave. Oh, he was just a sweetheart. And it turned out he had a girlfriend um, that he had had for two years. And he was still dating her the whole time he was dating me. He's, he, I mean, I found out there were times when he had the two of us in his apartment at the same time. And yes. How did that happen? She'd be over and I'd stop by and he would juggle the two of us, one in one room, one in the other, and then send one on, on her way. It was crazy. He's married to her now. He married her? Yeah. She got jilted. Can you imagine that? Here's how you get the most out of curves. Watch her left hand as it moves out, her right hand as it uh, moves behind her, and she leans to her left. All right, you're going to see some real curves come out here. There you go. In this type of photography, it's all about curves. Miss Jamie by me. It's a beautiful shot, if I do say so again. Uh, look at that blonde, curly blonde hair on top of that white boa. That's beautiful. Uh, she's got a nice smile. In fact, uh, for this particular photo, I think she's got too much of a smile. It should be more of a nice, closed mouth, like a sleepy type smile on her. Uh, you know, for, it's a reclining shot. I mean, it is a beautiful shot of a beautiful girl, but I don't know. She's got a black boa over here. Uh, you can't see much of it, at least not on what I'm uh, editing with here, but uh, it's still nice. You got a black on top, white on the bottom. Should be opposite, should be white on top, black on the bottom. But anyway, the white shows up her hair nice. And, um, it's got some beautiful teeth, huh? In here, uh, these little lights, they're called catch lights. They're reflections from the lighting in my studio. They should be in the center of her eye. In the center, I could have had her turn her head a little bit to the right, to her right. The only thing I really didn't like about it was her hand. It shows too much, and uh, thinking about it, I should have covered it up with the boa. Remember, watch the details, guys. These girls go to a lot of trouble for a photo. I think it's a great shot. And Jamie did too, by the way. Yeah, I just call it like it is. But this is Ashley. She's from the Tampa area. Showed up with her friend named Shaley. 
And I didn't think a lot of her at first because she was dressed kind of sloppily, but she spent 30 minutes in the dressing room and came out looking like a million dollars, and that's her knees on that hard deck. She could hack it, boy. If any females are watching this, well, let me tell you something. You get out of a picture what you put into it yourself. Of course, a lot of that depends on the photographer, too, and how comfortable he's making you feel relaxed and things. That's my studio. Those three arches you see there in the middle, that alone took me two weeks. It was beautiful. The girls loved it. When you show people that you're serious about something, they, they get serious. And I was serious. Uh, what happened was I got in trouble with the code department. I'm not the type of guy to take crap off anybody. And uh, that's that. Okay, you don't have to have fancy equipment. You don't have to go out and buy a lot of fancy stuff. The, the most expensive thing I've got here is this light box up at the top left. It's about two and a half feet wide, four feet tall, and it puts out a nice uh, soft light. And um, this one up here, it's, um, I forgot the name of it, but I've got it on a pole, on an adjustable pole. You can see the device right here. Um, I probably didn't pay but 30 or $40 for it. It makes a nice hair light, which I've probably got it too close to her. You can see it's kind of a little bit on the harsh side. Um, this over here is not even a photographic item. It's just a piece of aluminum sheeting over fiberboard I found at Home Depot. And it's reflecting all of the light. This light here and this light. This is reflecting it onto her arm and the right, kind of a little bit on the right side of her face. And it also serves to highlight her hair, show her hair a little bit more on the right. Down here at the bottom, I've got, it's not even a photographic light, but all of these are tungsten based uh, lights and they put out the same sort of light. So it's all even, it's all even all around. She looks real smooth, her skin's real nice. Uh, I think I said her arm is over here lit up by this board now the only thing bad about it you can see is a lot of light here but if you edit this photo if you crop this photo properly you can edit uh you can edit all this out and all you'll see is her the a little bit of the rug and the black background which is actually i got it a little bit i should have had it had her a little bit further away and aimed my lights a little bit more away from the background because you can see it's lit up here. But it came out real nice and it just shows you that you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff. beautiful Stephanie by Poole. Guys, it don't get no better than this. That is a figure. If any of you remember Raquel Welch, that's the figure. Here's a little bit better explanation over the earlier. Here's my light over here. You can see I got it turned away now from the background. What is that? What color is that background? All black, like I like it. It's recessed. Uh, in here is about four to five inches of recess. It keeps the light from spilling out and it helps if you turn it away from the background. Up here, I got a cheap light I bought at Home Depot. Sheds a nice accent light on the floor. The uh, shadows from the ladder and her heels look nice. Add a little flavor to it. Uh, the umbrella casts a nice light on her legs. It's a cheap, just a cheap little light. And uh, the ladder, I like simple props. It goes good with the black background also. Here's another little quick tip for you aspiring photographers out there. You see, you see those pretty little legs side by side? Well, they shouldn't be like that. This is what you want. See how that accentuates the curves? That's what you want. That beautiful hair, beautiful, beautiful girl. And that's more good lighting. That fist is for me. She's got in her right hand. Her dad's an aircraft mechanic in South Florida. Really nice girl. Yeah. You got a beer? Yeah, let's get a beer. That was fun. Yeah, I know. It was fun coming into a new place.
Yeah, I know. You know, it's also good. I mean, now that you know, once you land someplace like this, not then you know you can do it. Right, and, and, and if you're flying around and you do have engine problem, you know you can land here. Yeah. Between Paul Point and the bridge. In fact, this is a very good landing spot. Mm-hmm. It's better than that damn, what was that place we were at? Turkey Point. Turkey Point. That place sucks. I think that's probably how I cracked my damn landing gear over there. Although it's more likely it was Steven. It, yeah, it probably was. That was rough. Man, he was heavy. God, yeah. no. I really... What did he say he weighed? 235. Yeah, he might have gone more than that. <laughs> yeah, that might have been a little uh, under-exaggeration. Yeah. Understatement. Something like this. Hey, you want a Sam Adams or one of those? I'll take one of these. You got to open it for me. <laughs> okay. Super free flight. Woo! If Ashley comes out here, we'll call it Ashley's Ashley's Airstrip. There yeah. you go. If you, uh, if you wanted to come here, I guess you'd park a boat over there. Looks like you get a boat over there at high tide anyway. Yeah, yeah, you can get in there at high tide. It depends on, on your boat. Oh, oh. Yeah. Here, take a picture of me. All right. Maybe, uh, I'll show how to pop a beer at the nudie too. I need to see that. Just, uh, uh you can look through here. Out of black. Okay, it's out of black. Okay, and you got the green or red? Red. Okay, it's running. This is how you pop a sound bottle of that nudie too. When you ain't got no bottle opener. How was that? <laughs> Ow! Shit! Oh! Ow! That has got to hurt. Hey, you gotta think I asked you when you're doing things like this. Quit doing that, it's hurting me. <laughs> Ow! Oh shit, you gotta quit doing that, man. Here's a sharp edge here. <laughs> a sharp edge. Shit. Sharp edge. I, was getting, uh, I was getting a vibration off of that. Oh, oh shit, that's gotta hurt. Ah, hope I didn't crack. <laughs> Your head has gotta be torn up. It's got a head on it, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh man. <laughs> I gotta take a piss. Cut. Do you need a Sam Adam? No, I'm okay. I thought you might need some energy. This is the beautiful Stephanie from South Florida, star of stage and screen. Uh, she was in New York City one day and uh, was low on money. She wanted $100. Bill, can you please? I can imagine how expensive it is. So I sent her $200. She loves me. What can I say? But anyway, I got a position beautifully here from an earlier picture that I didn't like. Uh, she was in the same place. I just moved my position. And I've got her cut at the waistline, that horizon. In the background, you can see her upper torso and a beautiful face and hair positioned above the horizon in the clear. That makes a good photo. And uh, she's got her toes pointed and long legs splayed out there, really pretty. You may ask why I have my Jeep there. Well, what do they have on bridges? They got vehicles. And since she's in the clear, I kept my Jeep in there. That's Miss Ashley with her high heels relaxing. That's her six inch heels. She's about five, six, five, seven. When she put those on, she was I had to look up to her to talk to her. But she was a great girl, really sweet. Uh, she was relaxing here. Some of them would stay till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I ended up having to run them off. And uh, it was fun. This is her new bikini. Where is it? I had a guy tell me, she doesn't have anything on. I said, yeah, that's the whole point. She wanted to wear it. You think I was going to tell her not to? Would you? Yeah, so, so, some of you would nowadays.
I'm a big fan of Russian car wrecks. And if you watch a few of those, you'll wonder how Hitler lost the war. How you like that smooth camera action? That was nice, huh, for 1993? I'm coming into a lake here. I'm going to be landing into the sun, which is not a good thing to do. I had just taken off from the airport, and you can see I got trouble with the right gear. It's banging. I'm banging it up, trying to get that little square piece to slide into place. And uh, it's not doing it. And uh, But I did finally get it to lock into place. Our, I'm trying to talk over my audio in the next uh, that's coming in. Yeah, that's me at the top. I'm a dork. I'm fixing the wave at you, and I don't know. I'm fixing to get my butt in a bind here. I thought my problems were solved. I thought my problems were solved, yeah. Well, they were for about another 15 minutes. There's a lake up ahead just in front of that tire. I got some obstacles in there, but it wasn't any big deal. You can see the lake on my and, right. Uh, it's pretty short. It has I'm just taking a look obstacles. at it right now. I'm fixing to come in. I was going to be landing into You're the sun. You're going to see the world go to hell right here. What you're going to hear, I'm going to turn the volume up, but what you're going to hear is the, is the left gear deploy. Focusing all of my attention on the right side that morning, everything. I knew that the uh, left gear had locked up, but what I didn't know was that the uh, locking block was just barely holding it up. Down. Yeah, if you heard that, I think you, I, I believe I said you're going to hear the left gear deploy. Yeah, you are going to do that. Whammo. At this point, I was pitched violently forward and to my right. The water was up to my chest. You got the abbreviated version. I said it was a loud clunk, but it wasn't a loud clunk. It was a real scary noise. And it's not on this side, it's on the if other something side. Something like this happens, you're absolutely stunned at first. And uh, the cockpit was partially submerged. The aircraft did a partial cartwheel, not quite a full one. Having studied this for a bit now, in the production of this video, it looks like that water spray is coming from the float on this side as it is being pushed forward by the dropped landing gear on the other side. I just noticed this right now as I was making the video. In this steel frame, you can see that float on the other side, the back end of it uh, actually coming out of the water and starting into the card wheel. And the water spray, if you look close, it's coming actually toward the camera. The That's how intense this thing block, was. So what did we learn here? Just because you got one problem doesn't mean you're not going to have another one at the same time. Here's another near screw up. I got so involved in what I was doing, I forgot about my altitude. And I started into this loop about 100 feet above that bridge. It looks further away because of the wide angle lens. Yep, you can say that again. I've done some wild and crazy things in my life, but this is one of the worst. That's an American flag, of course, and a Louisiana state flag in a dare to be drug fee contest uh, put on by Life magazine. I got third place for this, but I wanted you to be aware of your backgrounds, even in situations like this. I'm turning and looking at that cloud. I've got a one shot uh, squeeze bulb shot at it, and I happen to hit it pretty good. I never got it to go straight up because at 85 miles per hour with the flag shaking so much, in fact, the whole apparatus was shaking that uh, I just called it quits at 85, but the center of gravity was so bad I didn't even bother to check it. I just flew it and it worked out. This is Helena one last time. I like the little outfit she had. Uh, she, she brought it herself. It looks like a waitress's jacket or, <laughs> to me, but it was cute with those checkered stockings. Um, great lighting here on her face. Love it. Um, the background, I usually like it dark, but this came out real well. I really like that. I'll tell you something else. If you ever work with three or more girls, you're headed for trouble. If you liked it, and especially if you disliked it, I'd like you both to leave me a dislike. Why? Because I want to be the first person on YouTube to get 10,000 dislikes, and I'm 70 years old and don't care. But if you have access to a fan or wind, use the wind and fan. Use it because it really adds an extra dimension or aspect to the photo. You can see this girl here, what it did for her beautiful blonde hair and for Carly also. There, beautiful. 
compatibility girls are like guys some girls get along some don't uh, these girls were strangers to each other that's Heather and Carly but they got along real well I never had a problem with them that's my drifter at an isolated location out in the bush. It's, it's sometimes it's just great to use your aircraft to get away from it all. This is, we're living in a crazy, insane world right now. Guys, if you're gonna fly under a bridge, don't do it at an angle. It's with uh, supports this close together, it's just too hazardous. That left wing, I didn't like that. Beautiful Carly again. I love this shot, guys. I just gotta show them to you. This is really nice here. Look at the look on her face, looking off camera, and this shot, this pull back here. I think I've shown it three times in this one video, but I just love it. Lighting is beautiful. Beautiful along with her. This is the luckiest shot I ever did in my life. The model is Tiffany. The pilot is Pete Noguez of New Orleans. He recently passed away, and I hate to hear that. He was a great guy. But this is unedited. That's how it came out. I had one shot at it. Tiffany's head is clear of the tail section. The wing just barely made the edge of the picture. That was lucky. And with the help of those two, it worked. This is going into a loop. I didn't go straight up for long. I tried to get that river at lower bottom, but I missed the river, but got a nice cloud uh, section in the background. You got to remember your backgrounds. Uh, made to cover a trailer plane one time and this next one coming up on me on floats was made into a cover for ultralight flying magazine yes i do wonder what happened to some of the girls that used to model for me especially this one which is really sweet ideally what i'd like to do with my life is get married to a wonderful man whom i haven't met yet most of the guys i run into are jerks um i'm sure you're not though um, and get married and live in a big beautiful house. What I want to do, my house doesn't have to be really big or really exotic, but I want a dance studio um, added onto my house, maybe an old garage converted. And then eventually I'd like to have kids and work out of the home and just teach dance classes um, at my house. I think I'd like maybe two or three. I'm an only child, so definitely want more than one. I don't know if I could handle more than three, though. When would you like to have it? Let's see. I'm 23 right now. Um, definitely before I'm 30, but probably not in the next year. <laughs> How about your boyfriend? If you want kids? Uh, my boyfriend wants kids, but he wants kids... Um, probably 10 or 15 years from now, so we're not really on the same schedule. 10 or 15 years from now? Yeah, he's working on his master's right now, and he's going to finish up his master's and start working on his doctorate, and after he gets his Ph.D., then he wants to teach, and then he wants to wait until he's dean of a university before he settles down and has kids. So, I'll be in my 40s by then. Hopefully, I'll already <laughs> have somebody. How about walking around here when you come around? What? Just walk that way. Hopefully, I'll have somebody. <laughs> and I would love, my dream is to have a house. my book it's called over and back it's on Amazon it's about some smuggling that took place out of South Texas airports during the 1980s Mexico had huge imports on imported goods coming from Japan usually Panasonic Sony Levi's anything that the Mexican people wanted but were suppressed by having these hundred percent or more taxes uh, laid on them as soon as they crossed the border so what we did was we overflew the border in these antiquated aircraft like D, um, DC-3s, Beach 18, C-46s, um, just anything that's old and could be lost with minimal expense. Uh, the pilots 
We were a bunch of crazies. Uh, we had a lot of Air America, former Air America pilots out for another thrill. Don't let these pretty pictures fool you, folks. The Mexicos, if they caught you, they could hand you your ass real quick. I got shot up twice. One time was real bad. This C-46 landed at night with a load. He lost an engine and landed just out in the bush south of Saltillo. This was a day or two after the fact. There's a soldier, if you look close, under that starboard wheel well, waiting for somebody to come back to think nobody's around. This guy pulled off one of the most amazing landings in history. He was lucky too, I, you know, I'm sure he'll admit that, but that was amazing. Like these two guys, they hung around too long after their Beach 18 hit an agave plant. It, they make tequila out of them, and uh, if they hung around and got captured, you never hang around. For some, it was too much of a thrill, and it wasn't because they were bad pilots. They just got caught in circumstances sometimes beyond their control. Like, like here, for instance, uh, I'm at a strip. I just landed. I had a video camera. These are excerpts, uh, frame grabs, I'm sorry. And I'm sitting here, I'm way overloaded, uh, about 3,500 pounds in a 2,000 pound airplane. I got nobody on the strip. It's a brand new strip. And uh, so I'm outside the aircraft. You notice the engines are running and the, uh, the woods on my on, woods to the right, that's my escape route. I always had an escape route planned for Federales, Policida, Ruales, anybody. And I'm expecting anybody to pop out of that tree line. I can't take off. The runway's too short for what I got. And I barely got out of Mac Allen. The guys finally showed up and they said, Flojo, that's mud. They got stuck in the mud on the way there. You can see the mud on their tires. And boy, I was glad to see them. If you were caught, it would depend on who caught you as to how you would be treated. They all had special ways of inflicting pain, but I would say banditos would be the worst. They were not too compassionate, let's leave it at that. So, according to Ben O'Neill, who headed up South Central Aviation, the largest border operation in, uh, in the 80s, he estimated 62 pilots were killed in a 10-year period. Those that survived were very lucky. I'm one of them. This was another engine failure. That's my nephew on the right, the little black guy. I don't know who he is. I forgot the adult also doing a quick pan here, the old Max Air. Uh, this was engine failure number four or five. I lost count, but that's my nephew. He's a 737 pilot now. This was about 35 years ago. Super VHS, it ain't too bad for being that old, stuck in a barn. But it had quit for some reason. It went. The, it gave me that familiar old ooh. When you hear that noise, you know exactly what it is. An engine overheating. Oh, my friend Beaver born a lot. He drove all the way up here to Port Allen, Louisiana, near Baton Rouge. He drove from Reserve, Louisiana, near New Orleans. I couldn't call him. He was already in the way, on the way. Couldn't call his wife because it was before cell phones and. Anyway, I made it out okay. The farmer bit me a little takeoff road, and I was lucky I got it in there. And uh, anyway, uh, old Beaver, long debt of gratitude. He's done me a lot of favors. He's with Air Tech in Reserve, Louisiana. If you're still with me, I was on my way down to the mouth of the river, and uh, I saw the sun. I was looking at my monitor inside the cockpit. I got one about two and a half inches diagonal. And I got the idea, I saw the sun and had my little alligator on the back. And I said, let me see if I can put that sun in his mouth. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think it is. 